Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah Witten, and today I'm gonna look through some of my old notebooks for no reason other than curiosity and nerding out about notebooks and stationery. So I don't write in physical notebooks anymore as much as I love them. I love stationery so much, but on a practical level, I've become a fully digital gal. So I take notes on my iPad, either using the pencil or like typing notes these days. But I used to be a real notebook person. And so I thought it would be fun to go through these ones because especially these two, because this was when I like first went full time doing YouTube. It's all my work notes. I don't know how much of it I can actually show you, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. Let's go right back to the beginning, 2014. I think this notebook is from Paper Chase. In here is, I really can't show you half of this stuff. This page has notes on it for my meeting with my manager when I first started working with him. And it's like all of my questions that I wanted to ask, just being like, how does this work? So this is my meeting prep. This is a script for my art is stupid video <laughs> that I did for the first time I went to Buffer Festival. Notes on the book, A Little Gay History. Oh, boom! A Little Gay History with all of my <laughs> notey things in it. Notes from meetings with Awesomeness TV. Welcome Collection. I did my first ever meetup at the Welcome Collection in their Institute of Sexology exhibit. Anyone watching this now who was there for that, please let me know. That was such a great meetup because the Welcome Collection basically opened up the exhibition after hours for us and had drinks and nibbles and did demonstrations for us. What a sick meetup, I should do more things like that. <laughs> Projects and things to think about, oh my God. I used to do this all of the time where I would do a, a brain dump. If I was getting overwhelmed with all of the things going on, I would just like write them all down in this like spider diagram and then use that to help me figure out what to do next. So this one, I literally did a little drawing of my brain on the inside of the page. Oh my God, my summer in the city schedule. Okay, what was my city schedule that year? The business of being a creator, YouTube and beyond relationships online. Oh, I was moderating that because I was very single and it was a panel of couples. Let's talk about sex and education on YouTube. What a time. What on earth is this? <laughs> so I have this tendency to come up with project ideas and I think so big with it. I'm like, it's gonna be this thing, it's gonna be amazing. And then, and then I never do it. And I think what I'm seeing on this page is exactly that, because I have no memory of this. It clearly never became anything, but I was like, I was planning, I was strategizing. It's called The Book Exchange, and this is a timeline. Video, social, tweet, contributors, what the hell is it? So at the beginning there's an announcement, and then there's a lineup, and then there's the actual event, and then there's some kind of competition, and then Right at the end here is some online release. I have no idea what that means. If anyone wants to create this project, if they can make sense of it, it's all yours. Jesus Christ. Oh, another brain time. What's happening on this brain time? Thingamaswap. Tit for tat, thingamaswap. <laughs> what is this? What is thingamaswap? What is it? Oh my God, I just remembered. I was trying to make a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if I can try and explain what this project idea was. Basically, it was gonna be a, a book, but every page, a different creator, like creative person, contributed something to the book. So it was a book full of creative ideas. Basically, the ethos around it was like, not exchanging things for money, but exchanging experiences and skills. So, so if you want to make something, but you don't have the money to like pay people to help you make it, you would offer up your skills. You'd be like, well, if you do this design work for me, I am really good at copy editing. So I'll do that for you. And in kind of this ecosystem of exchanging of skills and experiences. This is when I was a hippie and hated money. <laughs> but now capitalism has me in its grasp. 
I reached out to so many people and I had so many entries from friends and my sister like designed the entire thing and then it never happened. Holy shit. A packing list. A thing about New York. StreamCon, dating awards. Oh, so this was like my first Buffer Festival and then I spent two weeks in New York. Oh, FUBAR Radio. So this is kind of when I started doing FUBAR. Oh, I remember this. I was invited to a sexpression conference and I was like preparing my speech, but then I got really ill and I couldn't go. Oh my God. Side channel, question mark. See, I told you I have been thinking for years about making a second channel and then I just never did because I didn't have the capacity for it. So apparently what I thought would go well on this second channel would be drunk advice bloopers, collab bloopers, daily vlogs, yikes, vlogging events that are non-travel related, whatever, I don't know, uh, PJ the Kick style. So Kick the PJ has his second channel, PJ the Kick. I don't actually know if he uploads on there still, but that was what I wanted. Artsy shorter videos. Great, Hannah. Unscripted thoughts and then specific book slash film slash TV reviews. Sure, that makes sense. And I've got some YouTube things. This is what I was thinking about apparently. Second channel, daily videos, older audience, getting casual viewers to subscribe. Videos I like, but I know won't do as well. Travel books. Branding, sex and culture, question mark. I mean, we've kind of stuck with that, but we've just put like sex on one channel and then like lifestyle and culture on another. What is going on here? Playlist links. Oh, this is all like metadata stuff. Oh, it says Cultural Institutions British Museum here. And I actually have done some stuff with the British Museum. Cool. History of sex book. So before I wrote doing it, I was like, oh, I love the history of sex. I'll write a book around the history of sex. But knowing what I know now, I could not write that book. Um, do you know who did write that book though? <laughs> Let me. This is the hardback copy, oh my God. Uh, Kate Lister, A Curious History of Sex. She is a historian and teaches at university. I do not. You know, there's the like imposter syndrome curve where like when you're at the beginning and you like know some stuff, but you're at the beginning of your knowledge journey, you know some stuff about something, but your perception of how much you know is huge. So with this history of sex book that I was planning here, I was at that beginning stage of I've learned some stuff about this and I am an expert and I know everything. And then what happened since then is I learned more and I learned more and then, and the imposter syndrome thing is, is that as you're learning more, your perception of what you know drops. So you basically just become more aware of how much you don't know. And that's where I'm at now. There is just so much that I don't know. <laughs> Whereas here, I was just like, I know everything. I could totally write a book on the history of sex. That's not aged well. <laughs> I've put my inspiration as Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. Ooh! Oh my God, voice therapy. I used to lose my voice all the time at events and I got voice therapy on the NHS to help fix it because they looked up my nose and down my throat and they were like, oh yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I think it worked though, because I don't lose my voice at events as much as I used to, but I also think that's got to do with the fact that I've gotten older and I don't like party as hard at those events anymore. Who knows? Girl on Girl! Oh, that was my show that I made with Astronauts Wanted. I don't think I ever made this video, but here are some notes from a video or a blog post that I was planning on writing. And it's so funny seeing this here because I don't think I have changed. Um, and basically it's called, I have no original opinions. I'm talking about like feminist stuff and I'm saying it doesn't matter if my thoughts aren't original because I'm drawing on other people and then I've written privilege, listen to others and then I've written can't have an opinion. I don't believe that I can't have an opinion on things that I don't personally experience but I don't believe that my opinion matters more. Does that make sense? If the topic is something on black women, I'm allowed to have an opinion on that, but I don't think my opinion matters more than black women's opinions themselves. I don't know, I don't know what I'm thinking here. And then I've put, but then also criticism and analysis just in general of like books and films and TV. And it's so funny because I genuinely still have this crisis and I don't know if I can explain it where like, when it comes to culture and stuff, I'll watch something or read something and I'll just be like, 
that was great. I liked that. Or like, oh, I don't, I didn't like that. And I have to almost seek out opinions of those that I trust who are talking about similar things to almost be like, tell me how I should think about this or tell me how I should feel about this because I don't know. And then it comes to this spiral of like, oh, I'll never have an original thought. <laughs> this page is just a prime example of my starting new projects all of the time and then never following through with them. It just says adulting 101 and then this list of different categories and nothing after them. Just nothing after them. <laughs> oh, oh, I remember this. This bit of the book has come out. It's like a little, it's a little mini book. Look at this. And it is doing it plan slash to do. And it literally is <laughs> every single section in the book. And then I would color the box in in half if I'd started it but wasn't finished yet, and then colour it in if I'd finished it. This flimsy piece of paper was my bible when it came to writing doing it. That's crazy that I did it this way. Actually though, with the hormone diaries, I did kind of a similar thing but it was on a whiteboard and I just had like the whiteboard in this room and would be crossing it off on the whiteboard instead. I don't know what it is, like when writing books, obviously I've got like my plan that is all digital and in documents, but there's something really good about having like a physical plan and especially like just having it on the whiteboard in the room so I could just like see it at all times. There's a graph here. What is this graph? Girls, boys, 12, 40. Yes, I remember. This was me trying to explain the difference in gender and age of my YouTube audience. So on the bottom is age, and then like, I don't know, the y-axis is meant to be amount of people, but if that's the case, the boys curve should just be much lower in general. But what I was trying to explain is how the girls are younger and the boys are slightly older. This, is, this graph is not to scale or accurate at all. And also my audience do not start at 12 anymore. And then there's a page that says my name and then make this is all random bits in sharpie dmc is about mindfulness <gasps> i remember what this is i remember what this is my shorts wow i did a video with elena at vidcon and it was like a mr and mrs style like how well do you know each other thing and i was just writing down all of my answers in the back of this notebook doing a massive shit with the door open is apparently one of my answers. Biting nails. You're the one that I want. Love heart. Wow, cute. That's the end of that notebook. Next is a YouTube notebook that I probably got at a YouTube event somewhere. We have lots of notes for videos. We have a big dick. Love from Geomac. He was my old flatmate. Just drawing a penis on my notebook. Thank you, George. 25 things I've learned in 25 years notes, wow. Did I make that video, 25 things I learned in 25 years? I think I definitely did 26 things because that was when I came out of hospital. So maybe I did this one as well the year before. I do not remember. We're in 2017 now, 2017. So that's kind of recent. Lots of stuff to do with doing it tour, like the book was coming out soon. There's lots of stuff to prep for, doing it video week. Yeah, because I did like seven videos over seven days the week it came out. Tour ideas. Is this entertaining for anyone but me? Oh my God, there's a big page that just says, the future. Sex and blank series. Disability, race, alcohol, depression, relationships and blank. Wow, cool, that never happened. Oh wait, hold on, we have another the future page. More books, breakups, History of sex. Oh yeah, I wanted to write a book on breakups for a while. History of sex, still just on that. TV stuff, BBC Three Dogs, scripted comedy, drunk history. <laughs> I love to be in drunk history. The Hormone Diaries, podcasts, sex and blank. Oh, that's kind of what doing it has become. This sex and blank podcast, interviewing guests on topics, e.g. disability, mental health. That's kind of, yeah, that's like what doing it has become. Uh, merch, blog. Charity slash foundation, going to schools, workshops, classes, assemblies. I wish. Even three years ago, I'm like thinking like future business slash brand, but then I was so focused on the things that I had to do now 
I'm like still three years later asking those questions. Oh, here's the video notes for why having big boobs sucks, which I think is currently my most viewed video. I think it's my most viewed video. Okay, so this was like Hormone Diaries merch ideas. So one of these things did happen, which was like um, a little purse thing that said shout out to my eggs on it. But then other things that I've written here is, um, I just want to bleed. <laughs> and I hate my menstrual cycle. And I think it was to like show the difference in opinions and viewpoints and experiences. Like some people are just like, I hate it. And other people are like, let me bleed. There's a page of like my doodles for what I want my website design to look like, which is pretty cool because looking at this drawing that I've done is pretty much exactly what the website ended up looking like. So pretty pleased with that. More cute little website design things. <laughs> my doodles are so bad. Further education. Oh my God. So this is when I was thinking about getting a master's. So I was like trying to figure out what actually I want to do, like really figure out my priorities. So what I'm interested in, I'm interested in current research, academia, humanities and culture, young people such teenagers, people my age, teaching in classrooms. Am I still interested in that? I don't know. Um, not interested in becoming a counselor. Oh, I put also not interested in teaching in classrooms and then changed that over. I don't know. Becoming a teacher though, not interested in that. What can I do now? Write book two, read, go to schools with Brooke, subscribe to a journal. They're so expensive, these sex journals. Online courses, question mark. This is interesting. I'm still thinking about all these things. There's a doodle here which is like a Venn diagram that says Hannah's taste and Dan's taste. And I, I don't know what this is referring to, but it could be anything really. It could be referring to our music taste, but also our taste in like movies and TV. Um, and what I was trying to get across here is that I have a wider taste than him. Like there are more things that I like. Dan's taste is much narrower. And then we have this crossover of where our tastes align and that is the majority of Dan's taste where there's so much stuff that I love that Dan is just not interested in at all and there's like a small amount of things that Dan's interested in that I don't care about and it's impossible we struggle to like find movies to watch together or Netflix it is just nope never works Okay, I think this was when I was having an, a career crisis on a plane and I was with Lucy and she made me write a column of like, what about my current job do I like? What do I not like? I like being a producer, career and work life content. Hello, that's what this channel is for. <laughs> I love, love management. Oh, I love my management, yes. Banging book club, friends and reading and podcast, public speaking. I like being an author. I like my Monday to Friday schedule. I like the Hormone Diaries. I like books and reading, more excuses to read. And I like books and writing. And then THD book and spawns. I like money and the brands that I've worked with. <laughs> and then I'm not liking, ooh, sex ed content, saturated. I need more knowledge. Yeah, I think I was just like, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what I have to contribute. Not a fan of merch so much. Writing the blog. I want to do more but struggle with ideas. Want more work? Book two? Drunk advice, bored, gimmicky slash drinking. Yeah, I ended up not doing drunk advice anymore but also I just like don't drink as much as I used to. And then I would have the entire day like hung over and written off which I can't like afford to do anymore. And then too many conventions, be selective. This was the first time I made like a five year plan. So in my video last week, was it last week? Um, you would have seen my five year plan. And this is one that I made. Is this the same one that I made in 2017? Ah, yes. So the blog post that I referenced in that video, I think it must have come from this, but this is expanding on it because this one has like a one year, five years and 10 years. In my 10 year thing, I've got strictly come dancing. And also in 10 years, I've got have babies with Dan, but actually that's now in my five year plan. <laughs> This is my 30 before 30 list and I'm not looking at it because I made a video about it and I'm trying not to rewatch it until I turn 29, which is in a year. But that's interesting that that's there because um, that was the last video I think that went up on my channel before I got ill. So now we're like getting into being ill territory. 
top 10 books I read in 2017. We're doing all of the Vlognica edits. And then after the last video of Vlognica went up that year, that's when my health just went poof. And then there's nothing. And then just 2018 plan. So I got out of the hospital and I was like, I need to plan to make myself sane. Big projects, the Hormone Diaries book, sex ed series, whatever that was gonna be. Sex ed book for kids, adult sex ed book. Sure, personal development, learn Premiere After Effects Photoshop. Nope. Master's degree, nope. Smaller projects, new collab series to place drunk advice, still trying to find that. Live streaming on Twitch, we did a bit of that. More clickable slash searchable content. Facebook, <laughs> always improving banking book club. Aw, oh, that was the last year that we did it, 2018 I think. I think that 2018 plan was written before I got ill. So that 2018 plan I think was written at the end of 2017. Oh my God, yes. <gasps> oh, this is so weird because one of the like most striking things about this page is my handwriting. Cause I was so weak and I'd been so ill and my body had like gone through so much. My handwriting is it just looks traumatized. Ooh, feeling emotional looking at how my handwriting is. Oh man. It's like seeing the state of my handwriting there is actually like taking me back to almost being able to remember what it physically felt like to be in that body that could only do that kind of handwriting. Like there's no pressure on the page. Wow. This is like 2018, the catching up on everything to-do list, bless. Oh, oh, emosh, emosh. Okay, so this is really funny. So this says, it's like my design for new merch, which not a design, like a very much a doodle. When life gives you lemons, monetize the shit out of it. And this was me basically just like, hey, I had a really shit time. I'm going to completely milk this because if I had a shit time, I wanna like at least benefit from it. So when life gives you lemons, monetize the shit out of it, turned into this notebook. When life gives you lemons, sell lemonade. Haha, <laughs> there's a page that just says bullet journal practice. Jesus Christ, Anna. Bullet journal practice, are you kidding? Literally just an entire page of me testing different pens that I have. Well, this is sad. I don't know what this was, but clearly I felt like I needed to vent and I wrote on this page, so unmotivated and unproductive during recovery, sad face. Feels like everything is on a pause until the move. I need routine, feel like shit, bored and lazy. My mental capacity is a mess. Wow. Yeah, I, that's how I felt. I wasn't expecting to get emotional just going through old notebooks, Jesus Christ. Then I stopped using notebooks. And you might be thinking, Wait, you, that's when you stopped using notebooks, but we still have these two glorious ones to go. I'm so sorry. This one, this one is my attempt at a bullet journal. Um, when I got out of hospital and I was trying to find some routine in my life, but I really wasn't able to do anything. But what I was able to do was create a bullet journal. <laughs> that was all I had the mental capacity for. So it, yeah, it's just basically like, a reg it's the most basic of bullet journals. It's not even like decorated, which is fine because it's just meant to be functional. But I actually do still use this because every now and then I just get this urge to actually write something physically instead of using um, the iPad. And so when that does happen, I tend to like doodle it in this book. I don't know, I like how flimsy it is and it's got all of my common room stickers on it. Um, so when I do feel like I need to write something down, I use this. This one, so the reason I wanted to show you this one is mostly just because of one thing in in this book. And it's this page, which you can't really see. But basically, Dan told me that the internet was uh, physical tubes. He told me that the internet was a physical thing that ran under the beds of the ocean. And in the UK, it comes in at Devon. And I was like, bullshit. Because Dan says a lot of crazy stuff that I'm just like, what? What on earth? Um, and I was like, that's not true. The internet is in the clouds. <laughs> the internet isn't physical. And he was like, yes, it is. And then I got very confused and then we were Googling it and I was like, holy shit, the internet's a physical thing. Um, and then I was getting confused between what's the difference between the internet and Wi-Fi. I can't remember. Anyway, and this is him 
doodling. I don't, this doesn't even make sense, but he was explaining it as he was doodling it. But there we go. That's basically what's in this book. And then also what's in this book is just, it's the book that gets used whenever Dan plays Warhammer. So it's got like Dan, Simon, Taha. So whenever Dan and his friends play Warhammer, they write down their scores or keep track of the points, the things in this book. So there we go. Bunch of my old work notebooks. What an emotional roller coaster that was. Jesus Christ. Let me know in the comments if you are a analog notebook person or you are digital like me. Do you bullet journal? What's that like? Do you find you spend more time bullet journaling than actually doing the things that you set out to do in the bullet journal? Let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and hit subscribe because I make new videos every week. Bye.